Greetings and Shalom to you. Thank you so much for waiting. I'm here. Yahweh remains faithful. This continues to be the day that He has made. And we are encouraged to rejoice and to be glad in it. While you join the broadcast, would you please let me know whether you can see and you can also hear clearly? I would greatly appreciate that. Can you see and can you hear clearly? Yahweh is faithful. Thank you all for tuning in today, for joining. Those of you who would watch this on a replay, um, greetings to you those on YouTube. My YouTube handle still remains Nigel London TV. Nigel London TV, that's on YouTube. You can find me there as I would upload um, videos once I'm done. But greetings to all of you. And I bid you Shalom. If you're a saint, you should know by now that Shalom speaks to the fact that there is an assurance within you that it is always well. It is always well. It does not matter what you face. It is always well. Today's broadcast, of course, you can see speaks to uh, being led by the deceived. This one, as some of you would say, is, sorry, is intensely hot. Probably quite discomforting for some of you, so I would advise you to not be on the broadcast. Those of you who serve the anti-Messiah, it's already getting hot right here. <laughs> so let me say it early so you can get off. Those of you who serve the anti-Messiah, the Antichrist, in that image, that presentation, this is already getting strong for some of you. That miracle working name, Jesus, that same one, you had better not be on this broadcast today. You would only be allowed to endure this. Hey, Pastor Mel, thank you for the compliment. And you, you're a woman of class now, so you know just what you're talking about. Huh? <laughs> thank you. You, you. you can only survive this intensity if you are chosen, listen to me, to be comforted by truth and to be led by truth. If ever there were a day when you gnash your teeth because of what you hear, if you're wicked, it would be today. And I'm talking to the, to the, the, the dance hall, womanizing, uh, cocaine user, all the kind of wicked you all describe. I'm talking to you church wicked people. This is a day. Because the saints of Yahweh, the saints in Yeshua HaMashiach, must come to a knowledge and an understanding that if we're going to function by Yahweh's standard, then you have to have a degree of knowledge that exceeds that which the wicked has. I'm talking to religiously wicked folk, folk in, in the church as it's called, but are wicked. Those who claim that they have authority to say whatever they want to say. In whatever they name, they want to, to pray, they can pray in whatever name they can call God by all of his names. How many names does Yahweh have? And it is my responsibility to continue to echo this because you need to know and note deception when you see it. Yahweh never said that he has many names. And so if you miss the bench job, why would you be here today? <laughs> you will prophesy later on. So if you see anything that speaks to the names of God, run. Because Yahweh never said that he has many names. He said, this is my name, Exodus chapter 3, verse 15. This is my name forever. Now this is one of my names. This is, said Yahweh, my name forever. Brother Brian and Sister Dion, I'm so overjoyed whenever I see uh, your comment. And I must say about Brother Brian, Brother Brian, he goes to the facility that we're building in Paradise on the east coast of Demerara. He sits there, he said he would meditate, uh, he would also maintain the land or the, 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 the environment so that when we're ready to restart, which will be pretty soon, it's up and running. So thank you, Brother Brian. I must speak to that publicly for the heart that you have for that which we are doing. It is not the house of God. This is the house of Yahweh. We are living stones. I don't go to church and call it the house of God. 
that's called a fellowship center or place of fellowship. Brother T, shalom to you and welcome to all of you. So, if you are led by deception, and somebody may need to type this to help those who come on late and they can see it. If you are led by deception, you are comforted and comfortable with lies. You're comforted by and you're comfortable with lies. If you are led by deception, you are comforted by and you're comfortable with lies. If you are led by deception, you are comforted by and comfortable with lies. That's how you know people who are deceived. And the scripture records that the anti-Messiah, that spirit, would deceive the entire world. It also records in Thessalonians, the letter to the Thessalonians, that the spirit of that man of lawlessness is all And the interruptions have started. E networks, don't make me do a life about y'all now. You have to get better than this. Don't let me go live and talk about your service again, please. So in case you missed what I said. Thank you, Pastor Mel, you got it. If you are led by deception, you're comforted by and comfortable with lies. Apostle Josh, good to see you in Shalom. Lies make a deceived person convinced that the truth is the lie. Lies would make a deceived person convinced that the truth is the lie. And I know you get that. Philippians chapter 3. Hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 1. This is the Apostle Shaul who's writing to his beloved brothers, the saints at Philippi. And this letter, penned by the Apostle Shaul, serves to help us today. And it would help us today. I would share with you two experiences that I've had actually one is a thought in meditation and the other is actually an encounter with someone and this will help you to hopefully gather a stronger view about how you deal with deception and how you identify those who are led by deception what I must say to you here today is that there are people who are led by deception that are on this broadcast now because you are drawn to truth but you cannot be led by it and so you watch this broadcast faithfully, yet you return to Jesus. What is also potent is that you watch the broadcasts, mine, and you know that you cannot posit any argument of merit from Scripture to support your Jesus nonsense. I have asked... And let me begin with the first experience. I've asked, or someone was, was following me for quite a while. Ah. <laughs> That's it. Our brother Abhi thought I was going to say the spirit of Antichrist affecting the camera. <laughs> I had an interaction with a man two days or so, and I don't think he'll come back if he does. Actually, the spirit of, of Anti Messiah follows me wherever I go. That's just a fact. Because it knows the threat the truth poses to it. However, the spirit of the anti Messiah must work. It must work so that those who are of the truth 
can recognize or discern it and it must also work so, so that those who are not of the truth can be bound by it the spirit of the anti messiah must work so that those who are of the truth the saints we could recognize or discern it it must also work the spirit of the anti messiah so that those who are not of the truth can be deceived by it the scripture records that the road to destruction is broad and many are on it the scripture records again that the whole world is deceived by that spirit so the only a few only the righteous only the saint the chosen one can escape the deception of the anti messiah spirit most when the anti messiah is revealed in person it will be worse so in this conversation i had in philippians chapter 3 a man he would send messages to me very frequently he's an adventist apparently a seventh day adventist and he, I said, after a while, I said, okay, this is enough. So I said to the man, you are talking, oh, this is what he said. He said, brother, the broadcast has been interrupted on. Oh, boy. All right, let me see what's going on here. Just give me a second, let me check and ensure that everything is fine on my end. Okay. And hopefully it should be fine. Tell me if the broadcast is fine, if the network is back in reference to connection streaming, um, so that we can talk. Because you don't want to miss this. You should not miss this. Are we back? While you're here, sorry about that. Since we started one hour beyond our normal time, please inform the other saints that I'm here. Um, Nida and others, let them know that I'm, that I'm here, please. And the, the leaders of the ministry, those who work in ministry, let them know that I'm here, please. We're live, or I am live, and you are here with me. Is it back? Is it good? Perfect. Thank you, Sister Pam. Appreciate it. Okay. So this brother sent a message to me that really triggered a response because it was really, really provoking and upsetting. He said that, Joseph <laughs> said, go slow. He said that brother, he said to me, the world, the deception is, 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 is so rampant. That's what this man said to me now. And I said to him, because he would send, of course, his group things every morning or whenever he is speaking to, to his Adventist brothers and sisters and Jesus and all that, and he has my number. So I said to him, how can you have the nerve to tell me about deception when you continue to defend an absolute lie in this Jesus business? I said to the, the, the man that the fact that you can defend the Jesus nonsense, the Jesus deception, the fact that you can defend that Yahweh has never, although Yahweh has never called his son Jesus, the fact that you can defend such erroneous nonsense proves that you are deceived. So you're informing me that the world is deceived, but you def you're defending Jesus. So this is what triggered the conversation, or ignited, sparked a discussion. Well, not a discussion, because for me, I had nothing to discuss with him. He said, listen to me carefully, saints, that I have zeal. And in this zeal that I have, I am not presenting the truth this is the truth he presented here now that if you are convicted by saying Jesus then say Jesus if you're convicted by saying Yeshua then say Yeshua because at the end of the day listen to this now the devil does not cause a person to be righteous 
it sounds normal in the latter part, doesn't it? It sounds okay to say that death doesn't cause somebody to be righteous. I said it sounds good to you because you're deceived. So we go deeper than that. Adam, good to see you. Listen now. I said, and then he said that the name that you call the Messiah is not a matter of salvation. Now, those of you with me for a few months or the past few years, you can respond to this. The person said that the name of the Messiah is not a matter of salvation. Because you would not go to hell if you say Jesus, neither would you go to heaven just because you said Yeshua. Again, it sounds good, doesn't it? So my response to this man was, first of all, show me. Show me from scripture where Yahweh has ever said that you can call his son by any other name than what he gave to him. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 4 verse 5 verse 6 says, states that who, the question was asked, who made all these different things in creation? Then it said, what is his name? And what is the name of his son? You, he said, you must surely know. Thereafter, the scripture records in Proverbs chapter 30 verse 5, Proverbs 30 verse 5, that every word of Yahweh is flawless. It is pure. Do not add to it. Let's see, puts you to shame or reproves you and makes you to be a liar. I said to the man, you're a liar. You're an absolute liar. I don't mind how nice you try to talk. Because of course, he doesn't speak like me. He doesn't have any aggression. He tries to have the nice Joel Austin kind of talk. So I'm not, he, in his mind, he's not, he's not mean. So I said to show me from the scripture. Let's have a, a reference. The scripture is the reference. What is the scripture that says that you can call or anybody can call the Messiah by any other name than what the Father gave to him? Of course he can find the scripture. So he says there is no scripture that says you have to call the Messiah by that name because at the end of the day it's what you're convicted by. Really? So I said, have you forgotten in your wickedness that the scripture states plainly, number one, that if you confess with your mouth, which is to proclaim, not in your mind, with your mouth, to proclaim Messiah Yeshua. Hear me now. And believe in your heart that Yahweh has risen from the dead. You shall be saved. Next, Brother Terence is in it. Second, I said, Acts chapter 4 verse 12, they were asked, In whose name did you do these miracles? The response was, of course, Yeshua whom you crucified. Then he said, Shaul's uh, Akifa said, that there is no other name, singular, not names, not they are, there is no other name, given, given under heaven, whereby men must be saved. I said, what name is it? That's how you now know the spirit of deception. He did not respond to that. He did not respond to that because he knows the answer. His response was that I have zeal and I'm pushing all this thing like a Pharisee and the scribe and so on. And I don't want to accept the seventh, Saturday is the seventh day. I said, now you see what the spirit of Anti Messiah does to you. Is if you are led by deception, you will not, you would not be inclined to follow truth. And I want you to take this carefully because some of you saints have to be cautious with this. If you are led by deception, as simple as it sounds, you would not follow truth. What does that mean? You are not, if you're deceived, you would never answer a question. Or respond to something with truth when you when it exposes the father of lies who is your father what you will always have to do is to do what I call the rabbit trailing so you have to go off course and try to drag the person to something else I said I'm not talking to you about any Adventist story then he came with the that I said that I'm not I don't accept the blue eye long hair and, and he said it well jesus doesn't have blue eye and jesus doesn't have long hair because his feet were like burnt brass and so on i said no 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 we're not going into ethnicity here we are speaking to truth what did the father say his son should be called and what did the scripture when kifa said that there is no other name singular given on the heaven by men must be saved what is that name he didn't say how many names there were one he could not answer because his answer, watch this carefully, would have exposed 
who his father is. The spirit of deception, when he's leading you in your congregation, that spirit does not confront with truth. It confronts the truth. When the spirit of deception is leading your congregation, that spirit does not confront with truth. It confronts the truth. The spirit of deception does not confront with truth. It confronts the truth. And as nice as some of you want to appear, and respectful as you want to appear, if you ever entertain the spirit of deception nicely, you are also deceived. You must understand as a saint that the spirit of deception is brutish, brutal, savage in its nature. The intention is to make the lie the truth you should be asking what's different between confronting with truth and confronting the truth probably that's what you're asking the spirit of deception will not come to you and say the messiah's name is yeshua because in acts chapter 4 verse 12 it recalls there's no other name given under heaven in acts chapter 26 verse 14 it speaks plainly he answered me in the hebrew language and he said and i said what's who are you sir and the answer has to be in Hebrew language. If that's what you're asking me, the spirit of deception will not come to you with that truth. It will confront it and say, well, yeah, he said that, but you can call him something else. It confronts the truth. The congregation, when it is led by deception, the purpose, the purpose is to make the entire congregation convinced that the lie is the truth. And there's another part to this, that the lie is also the truth. Now, you can't miss this thing. I would not allow you to miss this today. We will be the fire will be turn up in a second for some of y'all. That strong delusion, Pastor Mel, that's what it is about. But in this case, the strong delusion is sent by Yahweh. Or in that case, with those who believe a lie. In the other instant, these people are blind and wicked. And since they function by their father's spirit, listen to me carefully here. What they do is, in many instances, they add to the truth. So they say that this is truth here, but this is also truth. You get that? So Yeshua is truth, but Jesus is also truth. And I've seen many of you fall for this foolishness. Whereby you have become so tolerant of the spirit of deception that you don't see an issue with Yeshua being the truth, but Jesus is also truth. Oh, we're going somewhere with this today, y'all. Of course, he tried the strategy, and this is the first adventure I heard to try that, to say that in Jamaica, some man and his son went to kill a woman, uh, and they pulled the trigger, and the woman said, the blood of Jesus against y'all, and the gun didn't fire off. Uh, and, and the son then, he, he, the, the fellow said he tried it three or whatever times, and the gun did not go off. And he said, now how can you say that there's no power in the name of Jesus? I said, your deception is so great you don't recognize it still because even the blood of Jesus is not for, 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 for dealing with men with guns.
the blood is for the remission of sins. Yeshua HaMashiach's blood was shed for your sins to be taken away. Not to do with men with guns in your hand. And on that day, it's recorded by Matthew, Yeshua said, Many will say they be not cast out demons in your name. They will not perform these great miracles in your name. And in your name they will not prophesy. And I will say to them, get away from me. I never knew you. You lawless people. Hold on a minute. So they cast out demons. They perform miracles. Great miracles. They prophesied and they still didn't, he didn't know them. Listen to me. Please. The spirit of the anti-messiah must have in this time power to work miracles. In this time. Right now, the spirit of the anti-messiah must have power to work miracles. Why? Because the wicked and perverted generation seek after these things. So if the spirit of the, of the anti-messiah if the spirit of the anti-messiah is at work then miracles by the anti-messiah spirit must also be at work it must be at work if the spirit of anti-messiah doesn't have miracles being performed now then people will not will, will chase after the true signs wake up because it interrupts the broadcast. Wake up. The spirit of the anti-messiah must have miracles being performed now or the, or the wicked and the perverted will follow after the true signs. And once they follow after the true signs, then that is not how the spirit of the anti-messiah functions. So Yahweh has them, as Pastor Mel asked earlier, deluded where they believe an absolute lie. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 1. In conclusion, my brothers. Philippians 3 verse 1. In conclusion, my brothers, said Shaul, rejoice in union with the Lord. It is no trouble for me to repeat what I've written bef before. See, he's repeating something he said to them. And for you, it will be a safeguard. It's in your Bible. It's in your Bible, as I tell you all. It's in your scripture. So read it for yourself. Those who want it for yourself, read it for yourself. You who have an issue with what I call people, read it for yourself. Philippians 3 verse, 3 verse 1. It's a safeguard. It's a safeguard to hear what you're hearing now. I'm about to read verse 2. Beware of the dogs. My brother John, good to see you in Shalom. Listen to the first warning. Beware of the dogs. Then the dogs are described. Those evil doers. The mutilated, meaning they are circumcised, thinking that it does them well. They are physically circumcised. And they have the viewpoint that this physical circumcision makes me saved. Mm -hmm. And makes me better than the one who is not circumcised. Beware of the dogs. The, those evildoers. So you can't say that it's an animal. Because in scripture, the dogs, says the Korean Shalom they heard, the dogs are further classified and described as evildoers. Mutilated people. So dogs here are not, you don't say then, or you do not say that he wasn't speaking to people. Because, oh, I know that Jesus Christ will get hurt today. For sure I'm hurting you all. So it's in your Bible, as you call it. It's in the scripture. That the apostle, which apostle, which man of God called people dog, Shaul. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm getting somewhere with this right here. The, the dogs are people. And I spoke to this before, but I remind you of it. Because it's, 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 it's in scripture defined clearly what dogs are. He said, for it is we, verse 3, who are the circumcised. 
we who worship by the spirit of Yahweh and make our boast in Messiah Yeshua we do not put confidence in human qualifications who the dogs are those who have confidence in human qualifications is anybody home <laughs> is, is anybody here the dogs are those who have confidence in human qualifications the dogs i'm speaking to church dogs church dogs are those who get themselves qualified to lead bible school seminary as you call it they're not satisfied they have to get their masters they have to get a phd and they try their best to say that when you call them doctor they deserve great respect because of the doctorate they deserve respect when the book says you're a dog and the church should be aware of you so right reverend doctor doctor your pursuit of it to be called some lofty title or given a lofty handle to your name makes you a dog and the dogs would say that you can call the messiah whatever you want because the dogs would argue from their position of qualification not truth Watch this. Now buckle up. You have to be a saint who's mature to hand what I'm about to say to you. Let me issue a disclaimer. I am not promoting voodoo, witchcraft, or any occultic practice. Get it clear, please. But permit me to make this point, please, to show you how the deceived dogs function. I don't promote voodoo. I don't promote witchcraft. I don't promote occultic behaviors, but I want you to understand this, and if you get this today, you'll be free. Watch this. I like to ask you questions, as you sure would have done, because the questions make you process on a whole different plane. Good to see you, Gloria. Shalom. Look at this question here. Listen to me carefully. How many of you have ever heard, when speaking of the African, that's what they call you, the black people, that's what they call you, your culture is called evil, it's of the devil, it's witchcraft. Who, historically here now, when the Africans the, the, dress in their, 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 their garb and they play drums and so on, that's, that's stirring up demonic spirits. Who's ever heard that? Tell the truth. Because you're going somewhere with this. Who's ever heard that when Africans play their drums, that's demonic spirits they're communicating with. When they paint their faces, oh, that's a demon, that's, that, that's witchcraft, that's voodoo. Who's ever heard that? This will open, if this doesn't open, I did nothing will. Good. Okay. Now listen to this carefully. Comfort drum, right? That's the call about the John and Guyana. Now listen to this carefully. Who has ever heard? This question number two now. Who has, has ever heard that even these same African people, as you call yourself, who's ever heard them stand in the pulpit in the same Jesus church and say that the drum is, is stirring up, is de demonic, uh, painting a face, oh, that's a devil you're communicating with, artwork oh that's demonic you join demons watch this here now the faces are demonic don't have them in your house they're demons who has ever heard these same people in jesus church say that number one christmas is demonic 
When was the last time you heard them say that? Easter is demonic. Because it's attached to Ishtar. Who's ever heard them say that the Jesus image is demonic? In your Jesus church. Has your, do you hear pastors saying that? Do you see pastors in television saying that this Christmas thing, this Christmas tree is demonic? Because it is attached to that which has witchcraft and paganism attached. Who has ever heard them say that the mistletoe is demonic? My son, Pastor Reg, good to see you, son. Have you heard them say that? Or do you see them decorating the church with it? Oh! So, the African culture is demonic. But the pagan one is accepted in your church. You are deceived. And you are wicked. Again I say, I am not promoting witchcraft. I am not promoting voodoo. I am making a point. Please get the point. That the European... The Caucasian, the Roman deception is we just choose to remember Jesus' birthday. But the African deception is that's demonic. Hanukkah is evil. But listen, it's about to get warm. <laughs> Please. I'm saying this to you for your sake. If you can't handle this, get off the broadcast, please. I beg you. I don't need numbers on how many people watch anything. If you can't handle, get off the broadcast. Because it will judge you in the future. The African culture is demonic. But you take the European Christmas tree, which is 100% pagan according to what you said, and put it in the church. You take the mistletoe, put in everything evergreen to represent life. And the gods who wouldn't die. And the gods giving you after the winter solstice summer. What is even more crazy is Guyana doesn't have winter. Let me deal with you in Guyana. The Caribbean doesn't have winter. So watch it in Christmas tree to represent life throughout the winter solstice. You don't get winter. So you are not just deceived, you're stupid. And you're ignorant. You are foolish. And you say that you choose you choose to celebrate Jesus' birthday with a Christmas tree and all the rest of it but if the African chooses to beat the drum to play the drum oh you're demonic I won't do it but I'll talk to you all today I ain't gonna do this but I'll just talk to you because I dress like this and pass medicine in the spirit huh? I put this on for a reason. And it may sound strange to you all today. If I wear this, I'm called well-dressed. And that's, that's an international standard because it's a business attire now. But watch me carefully. And this is not entirely business because in business you don't wear, you don't wear figure tie. That's for you young, young men. You should know that. In business, you don't wear figure tie if you're going to do business. You wear a, either striped tie or a plain one. And the color of your tie represents your intention. Red. <laughs> right. Blue, you don't, black, you're a businessman for real. You don't wear pink ties and, and yellow ties and all the foolishness to, to, to business meetings. But that's another story. Now, if I'm wearing this, I'm called well dressed. If I take this off, I take my tie off, I won't do it. I take my shirt off, and I sit before you bare chested and speak. Some Jesus heathen will say that Apostle Nigel London has lost his mind. How could you have your body out talking to people? Watch this. In my 
original or in some tribes of Africa. I didn't know what you from there. But in those tribes, they are well dressed without clothes. But you are taught that that culture is evil. Let me help you. They have the lowest among the lowest incidence of rape, if ever, if at all. The people who walk around without clothes have the lowest incidence of rape. So when I'm to y'all who dress with all your dresses and, 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 and your, your suits and tie, you are perverted and you hate What this in the name of a gospel? Oh boy, I'm about to get me. When Shaul went to Malta, Shaul was preaching to those uh, Maltese people. Watch this carefully. He never addressed how they dressed. He addressed what they believed. He addressed what they believed. Not how they were dressed. It doesn't mean you have to go to, to, to church with all your, 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 your body part showing. I'm not speaking to mature minds here. Because what you believe in this Jesus deception has a lot to do with the culture you despise. Oh, I, I wish I could help on you all today. What you believe in this Jesus culture has a lot to do with the culture that you are taught to despise, which is your own. If my Indian sister in this country puts on a sari and goes to church, y'all would say that she dressed like a Hindu. I turn to you, Jesus people, right here. Y'all I'm dealing with this afternoon. You in Guyana would despise a, a, a woman of Indian descent dressed like a Hindu. Because in your mind, you're dressed like a Hindu. When her culture is to wear a sari, you got a problem with the culture. Even in this country, y'all do it to Indian women. I'm talking to Guyana here. And the Caribbean. Your first impression is, oh yeah. Yeah, um, she needs to be saved. because, if, Especially if you don't know her. If she shows up to your church, she comes to your church, and she's there as a visitor in a sari, your first thought is, this woman is a Hindu, so she has to be saved today. And some foolish prophet, prophet or S, will call her to the altar to say, come, come to the altar. Um, the Lord said that you, 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 you need to be saved. When the woman believes in Yeshua HaMashiach, but you despise the culture. Even the Indians aren't free. They're not free to be who they are. Because you have an issue with the culture. But I'll be talking about the parliamentarian in, in his loin cloth. And I spoke to that before. Because my argument is, if Schumann could show up to parliament, to the House of Assembly, the highest house in reference to public office in this country, apart from, 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 from at least um, presidency or, or Grange and them, if, if Schumann could show up, Lennox Schumann, with a loin cloth, don't tell me that if I go to court with my chest out, that I'm improperly dressed. That's my problem in Guyana. Don't tell me that if I go with my hair, I don't have any, but if I grew it, the, and it's loose, don't tell me that my hair is out of order. So I never despised what Schumann did. I address it in reference to all Guyanese. Don't tell Schumann that he could do this, but an African, a Hebrew, can't dress like, like a Hebrew. Or I can't go back to some tribe if I were from one. The gospel that you Jesus people preach is rife, rich, flooded with despising cultures to promote the European one.
That is your gospel. And you don't even see that Jesus is a European because you can't see it. You're too, you, you're too blind to see that. The fact that your gospel, your gospel attacks your origin but promotes another one, you're deceived because that's not the gospel. Shaul never spoke to how the Maltese were dressed. He spoke to what they believed. How are you saved, sanctified, filled with Holy Spirit, and a woman's armpit turn you on in the church? You all Jesus demons. You telling me, Mr. Preacher, that if the sister comes to church with a, with a dress that has got the little, the little spaghetti strap, as you call it, and she raises her hand in church, that turns the brother on? He is sick. He's a pervert. How could a woman's pit on the, her arm turn you on? In a hot tropical climate, she must wear a long sleeve and, and cover her body properly because she's going to, to turn the brother on. Your, your, your brother needs prayers. He's a, he's a perv. Armpit? I don't have any woman's armpit who could ever turn me on. You're a sick. You hate. And I'm addressing here those of you who are not of European descent. You hate yourselves. And those who are of European descent, you're gone on the beach, you Caucasians, laying on the beach to get a tan because preacher could afford a vacation. So he goes to Jamaica, or he goes to the Bahamas, or he goes to Barbados, and he lays on the beach because pastor can afford to do so, the Caucasian pastor now, preacher, bishop, apostle, whatever. And he lays with his, with his wife on the beach, and they get a tan. Because even their gospel makes them hate themselves. You turn on by armpit. And if you want to bring the part about how a woman should be dressed, I will deal with you today. Because <laughs> you have to come because it's distracting pastor. <laughs> when I say pastor Rich, I'll deal with you all today. By culture by culture in the day of Shaul and others a prostitute dressed the part so once you see how she was attired you knew that this woman right here was selling something additionally saints when Shaul talked about women must be modestly dressed because those who were wealthy were flaunting themselves and making them the, 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 the poorer ones to be nothing and he spoke to that preach by the tyrant preach man <laughs> apostle I'm say please explain what who or what's the pervert for them yeah you're twisted mr. preacher the sister can't wear spaghetti strap because you got it bad. And you tell the ushers, ushers, your ushers, cover her up. So the point I was making is that the gospel, your Jesus gospel, despises African roots, despises even Indians, despises anybody except Caucasian. But the emissaries, when they went to preach, didn't address how people were dressed. Even the letter about women should look was in the church environment, in the church, the saints. He said, you all have to, don't dress as if you're one of these, these heathens. Dress yourself as a saint in the congregation. That's how you must conduct yourself. He never wrote a letter to heathens to say, you mustn't dress like this. Or you can't re receive the gospel. You hate yourselves. And you also hate the truth. If the sister like Pastor Mel 
sports her African attire as she as she as she, as she, as she does. Oh, why you why? You, you, you turn African now? You 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 get you getting back to roots. And watch watch y'all now. Watch the print. I've heard that these prints are demonic. Are you out of your mind? I have heard that in the Jesus Church, that the print that you wear in your clothing is demonic. So how you got so many demons around y'all in the Jesus Church? And it's about to get a bit hotter. My son Lored, a son of mine, I, I view him as that, <laughs> asked a question of me because he viewed the interview I had with the, the, the lady on Carib Vision from Barbados, Marcia Weeks. And in that interview, we spoke to the fact that Kyrie said he was checking his name and it has something to do with Yahweh. Kyrie Irving, again, you have to be mature to receive this today. This is not a message for the week. Kyrie Irving identifies as Muslim. So Lord asked me a sensible question. He said, now, 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 how do we deal with this? Because Kyrie said that the name, he recognized the name uh, Yahweh. That's what he said. And, but he said he also recognized Kyrie that our Lord said Kairi is saying he's, he's Muslim, but he speaks of, of Yahweh. How do we deal with that? And I responded to Lord, and that's what will, will bring me to this discussion as well. I said to Lord that Kairi Irving, and I said to my daughters the other day, I was talking with two of them, Andrew Tate, he was banned from most social media platforms. You can find him on YouTube every so often. Andrew Tate, a former kickboxing champion. And I'm not going to use the word, but I'm going to give you the... Right. And you, you, your mind will take you to what he said. I said to Loretta about Kyrie. I said, you know what happened to Kyrie? Kyrie and other people, especially those who are called Africans. And even Kyrie said he's of the, one of the lost tribes of Yehuda, of Israel. But what's this? He doesn't see himself as being Christian. The question is why? He said he's Muslim. So I said to Lored that Kairi is identifying with the people by association, not necessarily conviction. And Andrew Tate brought that out in the most powerful, in the most raw way that would offend you, but it's just a fact. Jesus, people, buckle up. You're here. I didn't invite you. So deal with what you hear. I told you to go before. Andrew Tate was the one the most outspoken person. Somebody said, this guy reminds me of him or I remind them of whatever it is. Because they said, it. there are very few young men now who are willing to just say what they have to say. If you're mad, that's you. I believe in speaking the truth. That's, but I don't care who I look like or behave like or whatever. My point is, if it is true, I will say it. Especially when it comes to Yahweh's word. Andrew Tate said recently, he said, I, I, I am now Muslim. Just like Kyrie Irving now. He said, I am now Muslim. And he said, I will tell you why. Now, that's what got my attention. I said, no, I need to hear this. Because if Andrew Tate, very, very familiar, popular YouTuber and, and, and social media guy, they, they, they knocked him off and blocked him and say he's misogynistic and all the rest of it. That he thinks that men are superior to women, which <laughs> we are. In reference to authority and strength. And that's in your Bible. So don't do it. Right. They say he's, he's, he's terrible. Andrew said he's Muslim because. He said what? Oh he said the church. The Jesus people that is. Do not stand up for SHT. You can put the pieces together. That's what the guy said. He said, I am Muslim because, and he gave the reason. He said that these church people, 
you all don't stand up for SH. Meaning, you're just weak. And then he went further, he said, tell me. He said, tell me what the church, you talking about Jesus crew, y'all. What have y'all ever stood up for? He said, you name one injustice that the church is standing up for now. Imagine Andrew Tate. This guy's not even a saint. Telling you why he said he's with the Muslims. He said, because the Muslims fight for what they believe in. They die for what they believe in. They, they represent what they believe in. In Corimaton, for example, they don't sell pork in any restaurant. In Corimaton and Guyana, Skeldon, Corimaton area. <laughs> hear this kid here. In Corimaton in Guyana, where Pastor Joshua is, they do not sell pork in any restaurant. Why? Because Muslims don't eat pork. And Muslims in Corimaton got the Chinese and other people saying we don't we're not selling pork. We don't we don't we don't sell pork fried rice here. We don't sell mixed fried rice with pork in it here because the Muslims have an issue with it. What y'all doing in reference to Jesus Church? Tell me. Y'all tell me what you ever got him to stop. Don't be mad. Let's just talk. Somebody type this. When you are led by, by the deceived. When you are led by the deceived. You talk of power. But you bring no change. When you are led by the deceived. You talk of power but you bring no change nothing happens when you all talk you yap your mouth but you got all the power but nothing changes when you are led by the deceived you talk of power but nothing changes I'm coming for you all AOG preachers in a minute sit, sit tight sit real tight here You talk of power. You talk. But you cannot bring any change. Nobody respects you all. talk of power I just find this for you because I need to show you evidence photographic evidence talk of power but they do not bring change deceived people see power in positions I'm talking to you church people here you see power in positions meaning the prophet, the apostle, they have the power. The right reverend doctor has the power. And you dance to the tune of those who are deceived. But you watch this broadcast, and you watch other broadcasts, and you are convicted because you can't deny the truth. But you continue to be led by those who are deceived.
Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate said that the church represents nothing. The church fights for nothing, apart from money, that is. The church, the Jesus crew, you don't fight against anything. That's unacceptable. Let me find these images for you all. Bear with me. I want to find this and show you. I hope it's still here. Call them. Tag AOG, let them come. Now, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm a DPS. You see, if I had my phone, it would have been different. But give me, let, me, let me find it for you. Ah! I never found it. So, 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 so many of you would have been asking, where is the church? Where is the church? <laughs> Why are they so quiet? I, I, I had to take my time to find this before I talk. Y'all pay close attention to tell me if you see know anybody in these pictures here. Do you know these people? You see it? I left it up there for a while for y'all to see, man. Good. So you ask, why? Why, why the pastors in Guyana, why the preachers in Guyana are not speaking? Why are they not dealing with these matters that are the social injustice across the land? Why are they not dealing with, 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 with so many issues and injustices being meted out against people? Why, why, why is the church so quiet? We, we, I, I, I would ask you the question as well, where are the preachers, I would say, where I found them? I happened to find them. I have, you may not be able to read this because it may be inverted, but I read it for you. Because you're speaking to the deceived here. You may not be able to read this. It may be inverted, is it? His Excellency President Irfan Ali said that in his it's inverted. In his travel through Agian, he has seen a desire by ordinary Guyanese to live in peace, harmony, and to come together and enhance growth and development. I'm reading what he said here. You can see it. It's not inverted. The head of state said that there are still a small number <laughs> of persons who continue to peddle racism and discrimination. To counter this, he pledges to continue working on dismantling every single cord of discrimination against Guyanese. Even my dog Joey is upset.
take a look yet again I'm sure you would know somebody in here especially those who are from the Jesus Church in Guyana you must know somebody in here so okay when we have the likes of Quindon Bacchus a young man in this country being gunned down by members of the Guyana police force murdered in the streets none of these preachers said anything Irfan Ali never for weeks went to this man's family to say that listen this is wrong although video evidence was was there to, to support the cops the men were chasing Quindon Bacchus and shooting him and a counter autopsy five times in the back and the finishing shot was in the chest where are these preachers where were they when on the Frank Anthony Londoners were locked out of a hospital unconscious people were came and you all saw the video where the, where the people were brought to the hospital and the doctors were locked outside because of Frank Anthony's stupid Groconian nonsense about vaccine before you enter hospital where were these preachers where were they when Aaron Boston was murdered in his bed did you hear them talking when there were the riots on the road in Monrepo where were they when a nurse a nurse who takes care of babies she works in the in 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 in, in the maternity ward when a nurse said that when she looks at black babies she wonders if one of them can come rise and kill her family listen to me where were they where are they Where were they? I just want you to tell me that. When workers continued to be disrespected across this land, where are they? Where? This country, Guyana, because US all got the same problem. This country, Guyana, has got what is called a motto. One people, one nation, one destiny. They are gone to Irfan Ali about one Guyana. Hold on a minute. The same man who called for a national day of prayer and fasting. And they joined. When Yahweh made it clear in his word that you must have nothing to do. What does light have to do with darkness? We cannot pray together. Now let me make this clear to you. When it comes to secular business, I could do business with you. When it comes to a public cause, for example, if the road is bad, we could talk about bad roads. If it comes to political issues, you're not governing the country properly, we could talk about that. Because we have a, we have a mutual interest. But don't tell me we're praying together. We don't pray together. If Irfan Ali wants to call that division, I'm the most divisive person in the gang. Because I'm not praying with you. You don't know my God. And I don't serve yours. So how are we praying together? According to Yahweh's word, you are a sinner. But you're still president, though you're still a sinner. You are a president who's a sinner. According to the Bible. What, why am I praying with you? Unless you repent according to scripture, you shall likewise perish. That's the book. Being president doesn't save from Yahweh's wrath. Being president doesn't save anyone from Yahweh's wrath. Political office is not immunity to Yahweh's persecution and Yahweh's wrath. Political office is not immunity to Yahweh's wrath. So you may ask, why, was, why wasn't I there? Who? 
Me? I am not deceived. I give you all the book. The men said about Yeshua, they said, if we only arrest Yeshua, watch what the ruler said. The church rulers and the Sanhedrin and these people said, we are going to lose favor with the rulers. I'm telling you what the Bible said. You all talk about the Bible? It's in your Bible. The, the church people. Well, they didn't have a church. I'm talking in the context of, of, of fellowship. So, <laughs> my dog is at it. They said that if we arrest him, we will lose favor with the people and with the rulers. Sounds similar to y'all? The, the leaders of the, of the congregation of Israel said if we only deal with this man, we shall lose favor with the rulers and with the people. What is this telling about these people here? It's in your scripture. They do not want to lose favor with the rulers of Ghana. So what do they have to do? The deceived. The deceived can always unite with the wicked. That is a fact of life. You telling me with all this injustice. You, I'm, I'm talking tonight at 7 o'clock on Norman Brown show. You have got people in this country who are called public servants who could barely make it. And every minute, there's a handout in some... When, when was the flood? Oh, flood relief. People who never planted a grain of paddy could get millions of dollars and $500,000 and whatever else it is. But public servants must suffer. When you had COVID relief, some persons were looking at your house and you couldn't get anyone because of who you were. These pictures were quiet. These preachers were quiet. Where were these preachers? When Sarah Ann Lynch, Lillian Chatter G, Gregory Quinn, and Eduardo, whatever his name is, from, e, from the European Union. When these people were walking all over the laws of Guyana disrespecting our constitution. Where were y'all? You can't talk. Where were you? Where were y'all? Let me bring you back up on the screen. Where were y'all? Where were you, John Smith? Where were you, Mr. Head of the ERC? I guess you all don't you you think... Sit, sit, sit together yet where were you where were you when individuals like Dharam Lal were in parliament saying that Natasha Lewis Natasha Singh Lewis needs a dildo what did you say what did you say the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach doesn't say you don't talk to presidents. And you don't speak to prime minister. And you don't talk to those who can give you some money and some land. Tell me where you were when Damlal in parliament said that Natasha Singh is needed to do. Where were you? That's a parliamentarian. That's a leader. Where were you? The gospel of Yeshua doesn't make you scared to address rulers. The gospel does not prohibit your addressing the rule of a country. There is only one name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. Ali can't be saved by any other name than Yeshua. That's what my Bible said. But no, remember your boy Samuel Midas who said that if you go to fast and pray with Ali and so on, you will get opportunities. Remember he said that? He said it. You all can get opportunities if you attend this national day of fasting and prayer and you show yourself up, then you get opportunities. They have the opportunities there. Let me make it clear with you all. I do business. I don't ask for handouts. I do business. Whatever I do in this country must be legal and legitimate. I establish, I've learned from, from Buffett and these guys, I establish corporations and businesses, register them, because I see where Guyana is going. And I know what my future for my children must be. I do business. I register companies. 
And if I go to you and say that I am in need of 500 acres of land, it's not a favor. It's a right. But these here, and this happened before. This happened before. When you are called to address unrighteousness, you don't say because it's the president that can't talk to him. Because Nathan spoke to David. And you're like people that in the church. But you can't tell Ali that what you're doing is wrong. How is it acceptable? How is it acceptable for Manzur Nadir to continually shut down the opposite? Well, I'm glad he does sometimes because obviously they don't have strength to stand in the anyway. But fair is fair. Everything the opposition says this man got a problem with. And I don't apologize for them. But let's be fair. Because that is what Yahweh loves. Yahweh loves a just scale. It must be balanced. You must not be unjust. How could you have the Speaker of the National Assembly whenever the opposition moves to say, we want to talk about something? No, 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 that's unimportant. Let's talk about, about public servants and, the, and the, 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 the hard time they're facing. That's not important. Let's talk about, about the, 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 the increase of surge. The spike in prices and people are suffering. No, that's not important. Let's talk about Jack Dio being accused of, of selling Guyana out to people. And saying that he, does, he takes care of business. The government started to take care of business? No! That's not important. So you telling me Manzuna Deer could do all of this and these preachers cannot address it publicly. But I'm called subliminally, I'm called the extremist. I don't care. Irfan Ali could call me what he wants. He's not my God. Can, can these preachers say, say what I just said to you? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for Yahweh is with me. How can I say that I serve the only true and living God and I fear Muslim? Who can behave like one? But photo opportunities. Then they bring Kwame Gilbert from Canada and he has to give a speech because of course he was a minister in, the, in the, uh, a member of parliament in the PP Civic Administration. So they have the whole bread buttered well. Remember what Raphael Messiah said? That he smelled, I smell bread baking there. Remember that? Right. That same one. With the old money, he smelled bread baking in the oven. So I guess you have to approach a baker shop pretty soon then. But when you are deceived and you lead by deception, you can't preach against unrighteousness because your deception is founded on unrighteousness and funded by unrighteousness. That's why you could take 10% of people's money and say that it's tithe because you eat money apparently. It's funded by unrighteousness. You are robbing people. Don't come away, can a man rob God? You are robbing people because Yahweh said in Deuteronomy chapter 14, you must eat your tithe. Do you eat money? So you already have the culture of deception. You bring people to an altar, come to the altar and be saved. Where? Which, which disciple or apostle of Yeshua ever had an altar call? None. Where have you ever seen sinners pray? That was, that was developed by Benny Hinn. By, uh, by, by what an old one name who died? Billy Graham. And 95% of those who came to Billy Graham's altar went back to sin. It, he, that's his record, not mine. And they blamed the church. You all didn't take care of these babes in Christ. No, they were never saved. You got information on them. They weren't saved people. You got information on them. They were not saved. They never had salvation. But when you have a pastor... Or a prophet or apostle who has to who has to be on a board of some sort or some commission somewhere and they have to protect their position they can't talk like me
I was never excited about oil money in Guyana. I said, give it to the Guyanese people, let Guyanese people benefit. I speak to having a redemption for Guyanese people, what is called economic redemption. If you don't intend to redeem Guyanese people, I don't respect you. Where are they when I said, and y'all could tell me that I'm wrong here. Tell me if I'm wrong. All of these show base facilities with the oil. Who do you see benefiting from them? Name five African Guyanese people, as you call them, who own anything to do with shore-based facilities to the magnitude of the PPC friends. And you talking about one Guyana with Air Finale? You talking about one Guyana? When rice farmers have to deal with increased cost of, 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 of fertilizer all the time and party. Who talk for them? You don't fear any evil because you're not deceived. When you are not deceived, you don't fear evil. When you know truth, you cannot fear evil. Because the truth is evil cannot do anything to me unless you are permitted. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Yahweh is my light. They never said the Lord. Nobody's name is the Lord. Yahweh is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yahweh is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? It's in your book. Read it and live it. You gone to our Arthur Chung Convention Center to take photographs and say that you all united as pastors. You all are so lying. You are so deceptive. If you're so united as pastors, then how can you have an Adventist saying that the seventh day is the day of worship and Sunday is, 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 is the devil's day? But you're all united with Ephraim Ali. How can you say that Adventists are deceived because they worship on Saturday and you worship on Sunday and the Lord, the Lord rose on the first day of the week, so Adventists are deceived? How can you say you're united? So in the same room with Ali, you're lying. How can you say you're united? But AOG say that you are predestined for salvation, but you could choose to be saved. Huh? An evangelical said, no. The brethren here what was there say, no, 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 no. You are predestined to be saved. So how are you united? You have different doctrine. You are liars. And you are deceived. Ali, you choose the wrong set boy. You should go choose some other group. Not them. You have a room with different doctrines and you say that you, you talk about unity in Guyana. Catch yourself. I don't know what advises you. But this is nonsense. You've got all these pastors standing around you and many of them have different doctrines and you say you talk about unity. Where's the unity? Adventists don't eat pork and some of them they, 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 they barely big like what because they eat eating pork all day. Every minute they want pork chops because they could afford it. Stewed pork, curry pork. Adventists they don't eat that. And they're eating it. But they're united. They're drinking coke. And Adventists they don't drink coke. So how are you united? How are you united as preachers when you're all standing beside, beside Eve and Ali with different doctrines? I must have time to visit you on your foolishness. United? You are united when the sodomites throw it to your faces that they're going to have the, the, the parade. I'm the only man who talks because you're still, you're still writing, 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 uh, uh, writing a statement. Four or five years ago, you still writing a statement to address sodomites in the street in Georgetown. When the men said they could dress like women, you all couldn't address that yet either. You can't talk. Even Granger couldn't talk. With Granger, you're going to because some of you have been sitting on board, so you don't want to lose your position. The only unity you may have is that you all love money and favor. You don't want to lose your position with the rulers and the people. I don't care about the rulers and the people in reference to your, who don't like me and don't like me. I don't care about that foolishness. 
For I am supposed to be hated for righteousness sake and for the name of Yeshua. That's what the book said. I am supposed to be hated. That's what it told me. I am supposed to be hated for righteousness sake and for the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. I am hated for it. I'm in good company. What are you all hated for? You are telling me that you could stand with Efren Ali who went to England. First he went to the United Nations and tried his best to say the word rep reparative. Rep 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 he couldn't say the word reparative. Rep 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 reparative finally came out. He couldn't say reparative because he doesn't use it at home. He doesn't use the word at home so he couldn't say it abroad. So he went to talk about reparative justice for us as African people. He went to the UK because he was accused of being racist. So he said, okay, I'm going to travel and show the whole world I'm not racist. So he goes to Boris Johnson in the UK. And he says he has to have justice for the Africans. But at home, he is yet to give African descendants one dollar from the oil money for us to be better. But Ali is not racist. And Ali likes you all bad. And they could stand with Ali. He gave money to the fisher folk because most fisher folk are of Indian descent. He gave money to farmers because most farmers are of Indian descent. They give money to sugarcane workers because most sugarcane workers are of Indian descent. How much did he give to Africans? Predominantly African population. You tell me how much they ever give. Tell me. And it's not his money either. How much did they ever take from the treasury to give to African descendants? Because at the end of the day, if you find oil... And you say the England, we're going to lead by example. We are going to show y'all that these Africans who you say by history, Ali, were unjustly treated. We were never given land to farm. Our forefathers had to unite the Hebrews and others to buy villages like Buxton, Campbellville. We own Mosa Kitty, Belladrum. We had to buy them. We weren't given even a dollar a day to work. You show me, Mr. Irfan Ali, where you as president ever once said in this country that you are going to give to the African descendants from the oil money. What did you all do with Ipadaji? You cut their money. The truth is that I even heard by Ipadaji in this, in this country. I didn't even hear about them. I didn't know they were functioning. But at the end of the day, if there's an African group representing African interests, how could you cut their money? In the decade devoted to those of African ancestry, you are cutting the, 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 the money of these people because they got you upset and they have to show whatever it is. Melanie said, Apostle, there was a religious leaders meeting. Let me see this one here. It was a religious leaders meeting just last week. I was in the company of one of those leaders who stated that he told Jagdio he couldn't attend in public because he was concerned about the public view his, him. But he has his support. <laughs> Let me tell you what's going to happen. There is going to be, likely, Subliminal messages preached and stated and post, you know, you have to respect the leaders and you have to respect the president and you have to respect this person and you, must, you mustn't speak bad about the president. That's what the Jesus Church will do now. They, they're going to have all kinds of because it won't tell me anything directly. They would not say that the president of this country, who's the man who's paid to be president, is acting in an unjust manner in his capacity. Because you can't tell me that you go to the UN and talk about reparative justice. You go to the UK and talk about reparative justice. But in Guyana, you do not give to the, to the population. Where are you all? Preach apostle. When contracts are being issued, I talk about this thing until I'm so sick of it. When, when images are shown 
and now they're trying to best to prevent it. Roads are being built to the tune of six bi two billion, six billion, eleven million dollars. Mainly, East Indian people standing with the president. Tell the truth. But stink and dirty, skeng, skelly bang, African descendants, and y'all can't see what this is about. Stink and dirty Juve. Skelly bang and skeng. That's the African descendants. Eleven billion dollars were being built. They are the East Indian months. They have the contract. Give one or two of them a chance to sing or something somewhere. Yeah, go right. You import it. That's it. Who gets all the contracts though? Who's getting the contracts though? Who are getting the millions of dollars and billions of dollars to build themselves? Who? Injustice is injustice. What did they say? No, they got a chance to sit with Irfan Ali and the president talked to them. You show me one scripture where you ever saw Yeshua HaMashiach, Shaul, Kiefer, any one of them had to sit and listen to the president or the governor or the ruler talk to them when they had a chance to speak about righteousness. Show me where. Shaul said, I appeal to Caesar. I won't go to see Caesar. And he met Agrippa and began to talk to Agrippa Acts 26. This is my experience, Agrippa. I met with Yeshua HaMashiach. And Agrippa said, boy, you almost convinced me to be saved. Boy, you, you, Shaul, you, you speak so profoundly, you almost convinced me to be saved. You got me thinking. What? For the wicked, only one of us should be talking loudly. And that's the righteous. We have people hurting in this country. You have people of Indian descent in this country. In Guyana, South America, who are hurting the Hadi Kareed. Where are these preachers? In the villages, in the quarantine, and other places, these same preachers are taking our Indian brothers and sisters' money. And they can barely eat. And you're talking about tithe? You don't eat money. Ali should have told you all that. You don't eat money. I don't eat it, so I don't ask for it. I don't eat tithe. Righteousness must speak in this country. You sit to hear people just talk. And then you all take photographs and show that you met with the president. And he's committed to dealing with any discrimination. Really? You really? So why, why does his son's school look the way it does? And why does my son's school look the way it does? And not tell me a private school either. The public school should look better than any private school because we have the oil money man. We have the money, remember that? You are unjust. How many of y'all in Apno AFC? Because some of the, pre the preachers right there support Apno AFC when Granger was in power. And now that government changed, you hop over to PPP Civic to support the president. That's y'all. You, you dance anywhere because you can fit in anywhere. How many of you spoke against the decadence in reference to our school environment? Look what it's you have to go to. Look at the school condition. Y'all can't. Some of y'all children go to this school. You wouldn't even talk because you don't want to offend any preacher, any politician. As a matter of fact, because if you offend the members of parliament, they wouldn't make the call for you to get some 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 help. You know. So please, I, I need I need two acres of land to build a church or five acres. Just set me up there, please. I want a contract. No, 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 no. Me, I would apply based on my qualification in reference to what do I need? Compliance from NIS. Compliance from GRA, business registration, I will submit them, which qualifies me to have a contract when I, when I bid. That's how you function. You don't call, uh, um, call a man, call, call Jack Dillon, see what he can do for me. Not me. Or call Edgel and Edgel, see what he can do for me. No, I'm not doing it. Because righteousness doesn't have to seek favors. Righteousness is favored by Yahweh. You don't have to seek favors with men. The righteous is favored by Yahweh. 
and Guyana must have voices of righteousness. Not weaklings. Yahweh is faithful. I praise him for the strength. I praise him for the courage. I praise him for the will to stand. Again I say to you all, almost 100% of these fellas, you all go to the church page and watch. We'll have the Christmas tree, the Christmas program, the Merry Christmas, and all the likes. All of them. Because you are deceived. I don't deal with it. Ali would not invite me to any such meeting like this. Because he knows I would not go. Firstly, I would not be anywhere close to that. He wouldn't invite Apostle Thomas either because he would not be there. And if we go there and decide to speak, it would be a different story. Type this before I leave you today. The gospel offends all sin. The gospel offends all sin. All. It doesn't make the president feel comfortable. The gospel offends all sin. Number one. Statement number two for you to remember. The gospel is married to the truth. The gospel is married to the truth. You cannot separate them. If the gospel is being preached, the truth must also be preached. So if you have somebody who is leading a country and he is showing favor for one group of society, the gospel addresses that because the gospel has to identify the sin before you know you need a savior. In the U.S., y'all got wobbly people. Look, Kyrie Irving has to be Muslim because he cannot. Where's T.D. Jakes? Where's Kirk Franklin? Where's Benny Hinn? Where, where's Joel Osteen? None of them, none, not one of them stood to speak in Kyrie's defense. Hence, he's Muslim because Farrakhan spoke up for him. Kanye say I'm Christian. Kanye doesn't know what he is. And Kanye has more gods than half of them. To the point you by they saying Kanye has a mental disorder. What this? When Kanye speaks to who is from the Hebrew tribe and he tries his best to, to, to promote some degree of, 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 of religious or spiritual concepts, he's considered to be mad. <laughs> the gospel is married to the truth. Because even as genuine as Kanye is, his message is not authentic because Yeshua never said that Jesus saves anybody. So Kanye may have a genuine interest, but his information is unauthentic. You who know the truth, you better preach it. You better declare it. You better proclaim it. You better share it. And you better not be ashamed of it. I thank Yahweh for you as always. I remain grateful to those of you who are kind enough to give to me. So I don't have to go to Irfan Ali and take favor from Ejil and then these people. Some of you understand the quality of life that I have to lead. In reference to being one who preaches righteousness to offend wickedness. I thank you for your kindness. Some of you give me fruits. You give to my family sugar. Whatever you do listen to me and you know that the least of your actions mean the most to me because you are kind and because you understand what the scripture states that those who speak to you the truth you must communicate or give to them you do it and I'm so grateful I would never allow an opportunity to pass without saying to you the saints I am thankful for your heart it means much to me I don't collect tithes. I am not paid a salary by any church. 
I don't take people's money to eat it because I don't eat money. It doesn't taste good. And it's not palatable. So I don't take 10% and eat it. My father has typed 70 plus years old. What did daddy say? Your son, son, your message today was hard hitting, particularly towards those cowardly leaders in the church who seek to deceive. Continue to expose them as real Kakadish leads. Let the saints rejoice in Yahweh and the power of his might. Oh, I love you so much, Daddy. Thank you. And thank you, Mommy. I appreciate you both. And I'm grateful that you've lived to see the grace of Yahweh. I'm so thankful. To my sons, Reginald, Pastor Reggie, Evangelist Pierre, Woods, Woods and all of you, to all of my sons and my daughters, the legacy of courage, the legacy of truth, Javon and all of you, the legacy of courage and the legacy of truth is what you must hold dear to your heart as you grow older and I may depart from you. The legacy of courage. If you are afraid to offend, you're disqualified from preaching. If you are afraid to offend, you are disqualified from preaching. Bless you, Apostle Joshua. Much love to you, my brother. You are so dear to me and to my family. Thank you. And thank you for being a beacon in Babis. Not quarantine, in Babis in general. Continue to stand and continue to shine. I love you all saints. Do well. Do well. Until you meet again. Do not be deceived. Because you can't. Love you mama. Thank you so much. Thank you. Apostle Lambert. Love you my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Yahweh is so faithful. I love you all. Do well. This evening at 7 p.m. I'm having an interaction with Norman Brown and Freddie Kassoon. I'll share the, 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 as long as I can, i share it on my page. Um, it's not a church service. It's a discussion about what's happening in Guyana. You're free to join us. Bye-bye. Do well.